Oh, it's not too unusual that a film can be abandoned during production. It is pretty surprising when it happens once production has wrapped and it's seemingly ready to hit theaters or streaming services. We are back once again to dive into the phenomenon of completed films getting thrown in the can. I'm Ewan, this is Wild Culture, and here are 10 more completed movies you will never see. Number 10, The Mothership. Matt Charman has had a pretty rough start as a director in Hollywood since his directorial debut, The Mothership, has been scrapped. It's a loss alleviated by the fact that he's the guy who wrote friggin' Bridge of Spies, but, you know, still sucks that his first time as a director is gonna be lost forever. In this sci-fi thriller, Sarah Morse, played by Halle Berry, discovers an alien ship under her house one year after her husband mysteriously vanished. It's hard to say what happens in the plot after that, since the whole thing was scrapped in January of this year. Despite all the time and money invested into the project, Netflix interim officer Bella Bajaria felt it was in everyone's best interest to put the mothership to rest. Ultimately, the powers that be decided drastic reshoots were needed during post-production, since many pivotal scenes weren't coming together for one reason or another, according to their perspective. There was another glaring issue apparently too. The mothership spent so much time in post-production that the child actors were noticeably older than they were when they shot their scenes initially. The higher-ups weren't apparently willing to splash out more cash to reshoot the majority of the movie, which in turn spurred Netflix to cut its losses. Unfortunate all around, really. Number 9. All-Star Weekend Not content with his acting and comedic accolades, and also his uncanny impersonation abilities, the ever-talented Jamie Foxx decided to direct a feature-length movie back in 2012. The first theatrical film directed by the Collateral Star was set to be a basketball rivalry comedy called All-Star Weekend. Boasting a pretty formidable cast, including Snoop Dogg, DJ Khaled, Ken Jeong, Gerard Butler, Jeremy Piven, Benicio Del Toro, and Robert Downey Jr., things looked promising for Fox's transition into big screen directing. And though the project was announced in 2012, All-Star Weekend took an eternity to take shape, so it wasn't set for release until 2018. Since the film was still in post-production at this time, it was delayed to early 2019, and then again in 2021. By the time 2022 came around, it was clear that All-Star Weekend just wasn't coming out anytime soon. Ever. The reason why? Well, the potentially offensive humor. Fox was worried his work would be deemed culturally insensitive since Downey Jr. was set to portray a Latino character. According to Fox, he cast the Iron Man star in the role to, quote, break open the sensitive corners where people go back to laughing again. Believing that the gag would be taken the wrong way, Fox says he reluctantly had All-Star Weekend shelved. Number 8. Don's Plum 2001's Don's Plum was set to focus on a bunch of LA teens chatting about their lives while at a local diner. R.D. Robb's first and only film was mostly unscripted to make the dialogue appear more spontaneous and genuine. That detail is going to become pretty important pretty soon. Just as Rob was putting the finishing touches on Don's Plum, he hit a major roadblock. Two of the movie stars, Leonardo DiCaprio and Tobey Maguire, were reportedly unhappy with how everything turned out, claiming they only agreed to star under the impression the project was a short not a feature film. The whole kerfuffle led to a lawsuit with the Hollywood stars and longtime friends stating they were hired under false pretenses. Producer David Stutman claimed McGuire was also concerned as his improvised dialogue ostensibly revealed too much about his personal life. In the end, the pair of scenes were removed and the film was banned in the United States and Canada. Even though one of the writers, Dale Wheatley, uploaded Don's Plum for free online in 2014, it was removed shortly thereafter. Number 7. Hippie Hippie Shake Based on Richard Neville's memoir of the same name, Hippie Hippie Shake was meant to revolve around the Aussie journalist shortly after he moved to London. After releasing the British version of his counterculture magazine, Neville finds himself caught in a national scandal and is put on trial for obscenity. 
Though Hippie Hippie Shake was announced in 1998, the project didn't get started until 2007. Concerns were warranted about the film's future when the director and head screenwriter walked away during post-production due to the ever pesky creative differences. But despite these difficulties, the first cut fared well during test screenings, with lead actress Sienna Miller receiving heavy praise. As such, it looked like the worst was behind everyone involved, and Hippie Hippie Shake would get a release. Sadly, the worst was actually yet to come. After the 2010 thriller Green Zone bombed commercially, Universal felt like they had to go into damage control mode. Due to Hippie Hippie Shake's ballooning budget, the studio scrapped its release and ordered the negatives to be destroyed. For this reason, Hippie Hippie Shake is among the few entries on this list that's pretty much guaranteed to never be seen, since the finished film doesn't actually exist anymore. Number 6. Unlawful Killing Princess Diana of Wales died in 1997 along with her partner Dodi Fired in a tragic car crash. Numerous conspiracy theories circulated following her death, with one suggesting that the princess was assassinated by the royal family. In 2011, Keith Allen was set on releasing a documentary called Unlawful Killing that centered around this particular claim. Rather than taking what you'd call an impartial approach to the subject matter, Unlawful Killing went all in on the conspiracy angle, which made its release in the UK where everyone is definitely extremely normal about the royals, impossible. To nobody's surprise, a defamation case was made against the film's subject matter. As a result, the director was ordered to make 87 cuts to Unlawful Killing if he wished to get it released without suffering legal action. This did not happen, and to compound things further, the film couldn't be released in the United States either, due to no insurance companies being willing to cover the potential lawsuits that could have shown up in the wake of its release. Apart from a single screening at Cannes Film Festival, Unlawful Killing has never been officially released to the public. Number 5. My Best Friend's Birthday Long before Quentin Tarantino made a name for himself with Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, and Kill Bill, our favorite hot takes viewing movie man started off with My Best Friend's Birthday. In this indie comedy, a radio DJ called Clarence Poole, played by Tarantino himself, throws his friend the best damn birthday party possible after he gets dumped. It's not a particularly epic tale, but hey, everyone's gonna start somewhere. Tarantino heads may have heard how his directorial debut was intended to be a 70 minute feature, but was recut into a 36 minute short after half the footage was lost in a lab fire. Or so the story goes. In the 2019 book, My Best Friend's Birthday, the making of a Quentin Tarantino film, it was revealed how this lab fire story was just that, a story and nothing more. In reality, Tarantino tossed out some film roles by mistake, making it impossible to complete the project without shooting additional scenes. Not happy with how the remaining footage turned out, Tarantino lost all incentive to see My Best Friend's Birthday through and just cobbled together what remained for the short. Number 4. My Brother Borat even though the 2006 mockumentary Borat was a huge success, it took 14 years before it received a true sequel. But if Kazakh director Eric Rakashev had his way, we would have gotten a sort of follow-up much sooner. Upset with how Sasha Baron Cohen's comedy portrayed Kazakhstan, Rakashev hoped to set the record straight with an unauthorized sequel. My brother Borat follows a journalist who's inspired to visit Kazakhstan after watching Borat. While there, he meets Borat's sibling, Durat, and discovers Kazakhstan is a modern and thriving nation. Despite Rakashev's good intentions, he also included scenes that may not have depicted the country in the best light, including a sequence where Durat fornicates with a donkey. Yeah. It goes without saying why My Brother Borat never came to fruition. Since the project blatantly infringes on Cohen's creation, the film couldn't be released without guaranteeing a lawsuit. So, Rakishev did say he wouldn't mind going to court since it would help promote his work, but despite the director's defiant words, there's no indication My Brother Borat will ever be seen. Number 3. All American Massacre 
At the face may be the most recognisable villain in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, but his brother, Robert Chop Top Sawyer, is probably a close second. Debuting in the first sequel, which was an underrated follow-up directed by horror legend Toby Hooper, the plate-headed cannibal was an instant standout, thanks to Bill Moseley's charismatic and gross performance. In 1998, William Tony Hooper, son of the original director Toby Hooper, began filming a Texas Chainsaw spin-off called All American Massacre. Massacre, which focused on Chop Top. Though the project was originally conceived as a 15 minute short, it expanded into an hour long feature. The film opens to the revelation that Chop Top survived the climax of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, despite having his abdomen, you know, being completely sliced open and that. After recovering in prison for several years, the kooky flesh eater breaks out and embarks on yet another meat-guzzling murder spree. Even though Hooper completed filming on All American Massacre and even released a trailer, the expensive post-production caused everything to stall. Hooper did set up a Kickstarter campaign to raise funds to get it finished, but failed to meet his target. Though All American Massacre may get the money it needs in the future, it's highly likely the film's release will never come to pass, which I personally think is a huge shame. Number 2. Big Bug Man if you're familiar with the story of The Fly, whether the 1950s original or the masterful remake from David Cronenberg, you'll probably have the impression that becoming a big bug man kinda sucks. Your skin falls off, you start crawling all over the walls, you have creepy claw things. Generally, not a good time. Wouldn't recommend it. That being said, the idea of becoming a big bug man actually ended up lending itself to a children's animated film in the mid 2000s. One that not only was fully finished and did not release, but also happened to feature the last ever movie appearance of one Marlon Brando. Headed up by animation director Peter Shim with a script from Bob Benditson, Big Bug Man was set to star Brendan Fraser in the titular role as a candy company worker who becomes a superhero and after befalling a bug-related accident. Brando had recorded his lines from home a month before his passing in 2004, playing the role of the evil Mrs. Sour. Initially scheduled to release in 2006, Big Bug Man never saw the light of day for one reason or another. Why it was cancelled has never really been revealed, weirdly, but it seems like Brando's last ever performance is destined to stay in the vault forever. And number one, Coyote vs. Acme. I mean, yeah, what else could top this list apart from the latest Warner Brothers tax write-off? Coyote vs. Acme, a Looney Tunes movie that was co-written by James Gunn, was set to center around Wile E. Coyote's relentless obsession with the unattainable Roadrunner. Meep meep. Since Wile's schemes always end with his booby traps blowing up in his face, the calculating canine goes to court to sue the device's manufacturer, Acme. Sadly, Coyote vs. Acme found itself embroiled in legal problems in the real world too. Despite testing positively, Warner Bros. Discovery pulled a Batgirl yet again, shutting down the film so it could claim a tax loss of $30 million. Because that's what we all dream about with getting into the movies, right? Getting a write off a $70 million film after it's already finished for a tax break. Oh my god, David Zaslav, man, I, I hope the Animaniacs ruin your day when you next step onto the Warner Brothers lot because you have so many goofy crimes to answer for. But not content with crushing our dreams once, Coyote vs. Acme was technically canned twice. Days after WB Discovery supposedly finalized its decision, it began shopping the project to other distributors, including Amazon, Apple, Paramount, Sony, and Netflix. As per the wrap, these companies all expressed a sincere interest in distributing the film and engaged faithfully in the bidding process. But WB ultimately elected to take the tax cut route once again. According to one source, the thinking is that Warner Brothers never actually intended to sell the movie at all, referring to the ordeal as, quote, dubious at best. So here we are. However many years into the Warner Brothers Discovery merger with three canned movies, a sledgehammer taken to TCM, and cuts across the board. And like, I'm sorry if goddamn Warner Brothers cannot release a Looney Tunes movie anymore, characters who are cultural touchstones and changed animation and comedy forever, what the hell are we doing? Like, seriously, what are we doing? 
gutting hard work by creatives so we can make a portfolio more attractive for yet another ridiculous sale and merger. I'm not going to act like movies are dead after the amazing year we just had or anything, but I do think there's a future being charted by Zaslav and that's already being imitated that is incompatible with a healthy status quo for this industry. And yeah, you might think it's dumb to get this worked up over Looney Tunes, but the world needs more Looney Tunes, so if you need me, I'm going to be doing a whole national treasure thing and I'm going to steal, not the Declaration of Independence, but Coyote vs. Acme. If you want to join my heist crew, just apply in the comments down below.